All right, you might wanna go get yourself a bowl of popcorn because this might be my biggest and longest construction update in a really long time. Um, it was a super exciting day. They finally opened up this path um, and I'm gonna dive in deep to a lot of things that we saw. So first off, um, when you're on the path, you can't really get the best view of these footers from that angle, but there are lots of views that you can get of the footers on different parts of the path. Like this viewing area here, you can see some of the footers up close. They're, they vary in size, so you have some smaller ones, you have some medium ones, and then you have some very large ones, and then you have some rectangular ones. So uh, we're gonna talk about um, some of the footers in depth, and then some of the footers also have codes on them. So we'll talk about that as well. Um, so, um, from what I understand, the rectangular ones on B&Ms typically, they don't always, but typically mean curved parts or inversions, or just a spot like on a helix or something where two supports are close together. Um, so in this location here, as you just saw, it's a very large um, path that goes in two different directions. So you have that large path there that goes down alongside the drop of Timberwolf, and then you have one that goes directly underneath Timberwolf that leads to a group of footers. I'm gonna talk about those footers when we get to that because these footers, now that I've seen them in person, are very interesting. Um, so as you saw just up close too, you also have footers that are like hidden in the ground that you can't really see like these ones. They're like ground level. Um, now, some of these footers, um, we'll talk about a little bit later in the video, have codes on them. And I haven't figured out the codes exactly. Um, I know one of them probably represents the, the piece of track on the um, course, so I think it goes up to either 66, close to 66, it probably goes a little farther than that, or 99 um, track pieces. So um, not quite sure fully what those codes mean, um, but there were great um, shots that I was able to get, and later on there's shots from Splashworks that really show off this construction site as well. There are footers right up against the Splashworks Lazy River as well, right up against that fence, and I believe those are for the lift hill that will start just near that construction trailer there, and angle itself up towards um, the tunnel. Um, with some simple measurement and guesstimating, <laughs> that's my word, um, I put it around 105 um, meters. Um, we'll get back to that in a bit, because I'm just gonna talk about this for a second. There's some really interesting things in here. Um, get prepared to be blown away. So look at all that rebar, okay? <laughs> so we know there's a ton of rebar on the south side of the construction site. We know there's a ton of rebar on the north side of the construction site. And now we have rebar over here. Um, there's some Halloween haunt decorations back there. I believe those are Halloween haunt decorations. I think that's for like the toy kind of thing. Now here, so we have special events, Canadian um, special events building there. But also if you missed it, and I think I'll in the next clip you'll see it, there are some Winterfest signs. Um, so, one would assume that yes, Winterfest is coming. So there's the elephants from the Halloween Haunt, but look behind that. There's some log theming and there's like a, a weird olden style boat. Interesting. Comment below if any of you know, I don't think that's from Halloween Haunt. I could be wrong. I know those elephants are from Halloween Haunt. Um, they blow air at you. <laughs> um, but I I believe the boat and those barrel like and stuff like that, I think this is for the new era area. Um, but comment below if you do know. I know there's some haunt enthusiasts in here, so let me know. Um, I mean, look at those old pioneer style barrels behind that. Those are definitely for the new coaster. Okay, here's the Winterfest storage signs you're about to see. So there's lots of woodwork. Um, look closely on the top left side of the screen in just a sec. There, did you see the snowflake? It's not much, but it's something. Um, so the snowflake there. There's also what looks like a, a floral sign as well that could be for another event later on in the summer. Um, this is like the new pathway and it's it's a lot bigger than it looked um, from other shots and it looks really nice, I'm impressed. So here's some of the footers in Timberwolf Falls. Um, so hopefully you're still following along because this is going quick. <laughs> um, there's lots of footers in Timberwolf Falls. I would say there's about four to eight visible ones, but again, there's a path that goes directly alongside the drop that goes a little bit. Um, but we're gonna you're gonna see in a second, some of these footers aren't for the coaster. <gasps> What could that mean? All right, so we'll talk about that. So there's some footers without any um, like rebar cages built into them. And typically that does mean something. So there are rumors of a second mountain. There's rumors of theming, this being really well themed. And see right there, that could be a sign of, you know, theming. So they could it could be for anything, but typically when you have a footer 
um, like that. It's to hold up some sort of structure. So you see it a lot on wooden coasters. Um, or So there, there were two massive footers here that didn't have rebar cages on them. And again, that for me, that's going to be some sort of theming or near miss element. Like if it's a wing coaster or a dive coaster, again, you know that I've always in the last little bit have thought this was going to be a dive coaster, but still you can't rule anything out. Um, so again, here's a really nice view of the footer right next to Timberwolf Falls. Now this is really interesting. So we're paying really close attention to this. So now that this path at Timberwolf Falls from the entrance of Timberwolf Falls to Splashworks is open, there are lots of markers. So you already got the view of the markers in the Timberwolf queue line, but now you have a view of the markers that stretch all the way to Splashworks. So you have stakes, you have markers, you have nails with red poles. Um, look at them all. You have pylons um, marking on top of stakes, which is weird. You'll get a close-up view of that on the Whitewater Canyon side too, which is really interesting. And then some electrical work on the Whitewater Canyon side as well. Uh, if you can't tell, I'm super excited just because seeing this all in person was like a breath of fresh air. This construction project looks amazing and I'm expecting a lot of theming. Something I'm expecting is on this path, I don't necessarily think the coaster is going to touch this tree area. I think we're going to see some sort of like Canadian theming in here, like, you know, some maybe like refreshment shops, maybe a new restaurant in the Whitewater Canyon side right here. So this looks like almost like what a washroom. So right there, there was like electrical plumbing and all that that are set up and covered. It looks like maybe a spot for our, our, like our, our restroom, maybe in a restaurant. Um, so who knows? We know that the Fost House um, thing from Kings Island, or I could be wrong about the park, is been, is, has been rumored to be maybe coming to Canada's Wonderland. And that would be really interesting in this area. I know we need another sit down restaurant. Um, and that would be awesome. I would love a live performance um, sit down restaurant at Canada's Wonderland. I think that's what we're really lacking right now. Um, so here's just another close up of that footer I was talking about. So what do you guys think? Do you think the Timberwolf path um, from all the way from Timberwolf entrance to Splashers could be kind of like a themed area, kind of like you see at Cedar Point in the old Western section or like Pioneer section? Um, or do you think it's just uh, nothing? <laughs> I don't think it's nothing, but I wanted to ask you guys. So here's another shot of the more rebar cages, some made. Look how deep those are. Um, and then you have more plumbing, um, and then you had more rebar cages that needed to be formed into, rebar that needed to be formed into rebar cages. Um, I did want to touch on the tunnel. Oh, before I do that, let's talk about this stake. So this is deep in Whitewater Canyon's forest, but still near the path. What's interesting is it is marked for attention, um, and it is a big stake. And it's near kind of like that electrical and all that. So this is another interesting topic. So Splashworks fence is done, but this construction fence for the coaster project is blocking off this Whitewater Canyon area. When I peeked over, Dory didn't get yelled at or anything, even though they saw me. <laughs> there's some interesting things. So there's like rebar cages and electrical on top of that like orange um, container there. Um, I don't know if the coaster project is in that area as well, or if there's gonna be theming, it could be anything, but they did fence it off um, so that's very interesting. Um, so I do want to talk about something. They aren't done this area. As you can tell, they're missing some poles there. So I do forecast that this path won't be open on weekdays. I think this next week they're going to finish this off and keep working. And this path will open again when Splashworks is open every day. So this is really interesting. So see that orange tarp? We've all been super curious about what's under that orange tarp. You're about to get a really close look at what potentially could be supports hiding under that tarp. I don't have much idea what it is because you can't see it, but I do know security showed up after and stayed right next to there, preventing people from filming it. So it's obviously of some importance, and, but I got some shots before security showed up and started guarding that area. Now, this is the obvious station and transfer track area. You can see the foundation for what looks like a home typically. So that's obviously the station and transfer track area. And so I want to talk about this. I was just about to talk about the tunnel width. You know, on the other side, it looks a lot wider, but on this side, it doesn't look wide. Um, and that's very interesting. Um, there's a lot of conversation between six seater, eight seater, 10 seater or wing coaster. Um, this is becoming harder to figure out than I thought. Um, so now we're getting to the codes. Now pay close attention to these codes as we start. So you saw 57, you have 99 or 66. You have that weird code, which we couldn't figure out. It looked like a, an X. Um, a seven and a something. <laughs> but this is really interesting. You're about to, some Vortex supports are marked with an X red tape and then have a code on it. So you're about to get a really close look at one of those and then you're about to see something similar in one of the coaster supports. This is really interesting. So pay close attention. 
if I get there yet. <laughs> so we're not there yet, but get ready for it. So we have um, some electrical. So you have your your speakers, your regular, and all of that. So they're obviously not done this area, and um, I'm really excited to see what this area looks like once you know the announcements made. I'm more excited for the teasers. Comment below how excited you are for the teasers because literally I think that is what I'm most excited about I'm waiting for you know more teasers to come I just love that energy that the general public even get involved with when the park starts their teasing campaigns here it is so you have STN 13 on one of the coaster footers pay attention because the next shot after this is going to show it on a vortex support so very interesting to what this could potentially mean STN 13 and then you're about to see it. So zoom in. STN 11 with a red tape X on it, 574 below it. There are a couple supports on Vortex, not the ones removed for construction. So keep that in mind. Not the ones removed for construction are marked with STN as well as the footers for this new coaster. What could that potentially mean? Comment below what you guys think that means because I'm, I don't know. Um, so here's a shot of what could be supports. I have no idea. Um, I have no idea what else it could be. There's three very large, longer, slightly longer objects there covered under tarps with rocks on them, wheelbarrows, wheelbarrows holding down that rope tight tarp, wood holding down the tarp. It's covered in things to prevent it from even folding up a little bit. Look at that. It is like significantly protected. And just wait until uh, there's a lot of electrical too, by the way. So as you see, lots of electrical wiring, um, well, covers for the electrical wiring. Um, Hartwell's on site doing that project as well. And here's some footers up close of right next to the construction fence or Splashworks fence. Um, and this is where I, I do believe the lift hill will angle out and go up towards the tunnel. And again, I measured it the lift hill length at about 105 meters for our coaster. And Val Raven's lift length is around between 90 and 95 meters. So whatever this coaster is, to me, it sounds like it has a longer lift hill than that to Val Raven, at least if we're comparing it to that. So that's super exciting. I know there's a lot of conversation about will it be larger than Val Raven if it's a dive coaster or will it be a tall coaster, period. Um, and you know me from my previous video, I do think this has the potential to be larger than Val Raven. And I think we need to pay close attention to this project because I think it might be one of Cedar Fair's biggest theming projects as well. Um, I honestly could tell, I, I couldn't tell you why I filmed this. <laughs> I like zoomed in. I was like, oh, that looks pretty. Um, and then I zoomed up at that. Um, so again, you can see more rebar cages back on the um, south side of the construction site that need to be formed into rebar cages. So a rebar that needs to be formed in. Um, couldn't see anything interesting there. Just lots of wood um, for square footers and stuff like that. Um, so that's the station and transfer track area. This is another great view of it. Um, so the square, the square ones I'm predicting are transfer track or for the station itself. And the round ones are for the brake run or lift hill or station. Um, but I do know the station's definitely in that area. We know that they always start in the station first. Um, yeah, so there's the security guard. So you can no longer take pictures <laughs> over that fence um, of the what's under that orange tarp. Um, so obviously it's of importance. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it for the construction update. This is the new Lakeside Lagoon. It wasn't open today. Um, but I am there tomorrow for a special little thing. So stay tuned for our channel for that. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, give it a like, subscribe and share. Have a good one. Bye. Here we are.